So a lot of doctors are concerned about that. So that when they put a man on testosterone injection therapy, they'll also administer an anti-aromatase drug such as Arimidex. The problem with that is the Arimidex is gonna cut the estrogen down very low. And when that happens, now the normal testosterone injections is gonna to start to adversely affect blood lipids. We are gonna get a drop in HDL and you are gonna get an increase in LDL. Hello and welcome. I am Coach Castle, a certified biomechanics expert, nutritionist, and efficiency coach. Subscribe to this channel to learn the most efficient ways to maximize your muscle growth and recovery, enhance your body, and advance your mind, all using the latest science. Welcome to Castle's Corner. The advantages of that, if you look at some of these testosterone forums, uh, is that supposedly some of the problems with testosterone injections are you get an increase, for example, of dehydrotestosterone, which is a byproduct of testosterone. Uh, dehydrotestosterone is pr produced by the activity of the enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to dehydrotestosterone. So let's call it DHT for short. Problem with DHT is associated with male pattern baldness, acne, and it used to be associated with prostate problems, including prostate cancer, but that, that, the newest research shows that's not true. So you can discount the prostate, but, but it still causes acne and it will stimulate. If you have the genetics for male pattern baldness, you're going to lose your hair with the high levels of DHT. So that, I remember, I remember, sorry, Ram, I remember you saying in an interview, the reason you didn't do steroids and stayed natural was you wanted your beautiful head of hair, actually. Right. Actually, yeah, that's very true because when I was a teenager, when I was a teenager competing, uh, I contemplated using steroids because other teenagers my age were using testosterone, were using anabolic steroids. But then I noticed a pattern. These guys were like, what, how old was I? I was what, 20, 24 years old? These guys were going bald at 25, 26 years old. They were losing their hair. They had bald spots. And that's when I did the research and I found out about DHT. And I was, I, I come, as I said in the interviews, both of my grandfathers on both sides were bald as cue balls by the time they were 35. I have very bad genetics. My father never went bald, but my grandfathers did. And, you know, this recessive gene, I didn't want to take the chance because I didn't think I'd look good bald. So I, for that reason alone, I know it sounds funny. I avoided, I never took anabolic steroids. If I it's just, important, I mean, if it's important to you, and I mean, a lot of steroids do actually have high contents of that. So, you you know. It, well, you know, the, well, the, the funny part is that, that, uh, that I wasn't even concerned about all the other possible side effects of steroids. In other words, all I was concerned about was the losing head. Now, the ironic part is, remember, this is many years ago. I could never have foretold that there'd be guys walking around completely bald. Every other guy I see is bald. You know, some of these guys actually have hair and shave their hair. I mean, every other guy I see is bald, and it seems to be completely accepted. When I was a, a young guy, women, you always talked how they love guys with long hair and and I said, oh, my God, if I lose my hair, women will never look at me, blah, blah, blah. I'll never get married, this and that. You know, so I, I had a fear of it, you know. But I still, I mean, I don't regret the decision. Don't get me wrong. But getting back to the uh, testosterone therapy, the thing with the, again, with the injections is there, there's the possible thing is the increase in DHT with the DHT side effects. And, uh, and then there's the so-called cardiovascular effects. Uh, Taking uh, testosterone supposedly will, you know, lower HDL and elevate LDL, which sets you up in a pattern uh, that's risky for cardiovascular disease. However, what they a lot of people don't realize is that when you take testosterone, uh, some of it, and this is another possible problem, uh, a certain percentage of it is converted to estrogen uh, by way of the aromatase enzyme. You know, and this is the way men produce estrogen. Every man produces estrogen in his body from his natural testosterone. Estrogen has certain health benefits in men. Uh, small amounts are needed for maximal health in men. However, you know, uh, the problem is that uh, if you get too much estrogen, there's a point where it starts to get dangerous. It's associated with sudden heart attacks and this and that. So that's another problem. Uh, however, with testosterone injections, because of the conversion into estrogen, uh, the HDL is not affected. See, it's not affected. And LDL is not affected. So we can rule that out. However, a lot of doctors, when they administer testosterone injections, they're afraid of the estrogen 
And because estrogen, there's some emerging research that shows that estrogen has a relationship with prostate cancer, stimulating it. Now, that's, that's the irony. Testosterone doesn't stimulate, but estrogen may. It's not concrete yet, but it's an emerging science, let's say. So a lot of doctors are concerned about that. So that when they put a man on testosterone injection therapy, they'll also administer an anti-aromatase drug such as Arimidex. The problem with that is the Arimidex is going to cut the estrogen down very low. And when that happens, now the normal testosterone injections is going to start to adversely affect blood lipids. We are going to get a drop in HDL and you are going to get an increase in LDL, which theoretically, if you have a bad diet and not exercising, increases your risk for cardiovascular disease, cardiovascular disease, CBD. However, if you're exercising and on a good diet, I would say it's not a big concern. I, it's not nothing to worry about. Thank you.